Uh, regional finalist in Liverpool 2016, some good EUIC top 64 placements and a Malmo regional championships. Carl's been around the block for many years, yeah. very consistent performer, um, has been travelling around the world playing Pokemon and doing what he loves and having some fantastic performances throughout. Yeah, fantastic British player. You know, you always see his names on the top ranks, uh, you know, one of the usual suspects in these big tournaments. And here we see Christian as well rocking the Charizard. Really interesting this one. We see the... Arvin build here. We've been testing that quite a bit this weekend. You know, the Arvin build coming over, you know, the Pidgeot build is a more popular way of playing Charizard. You know, we originally partnered up Charizard with, say, Pidgeot and Arceus V-Star, but now it's going for this Arvin build using that new technical machine Evolution, one of the new cards from Paradox Rift. Um, but here we see Carl opting to choose the tried and tested Gardevoir, so consistent, of course, with the Silver Tempest Coolia. You know, with the draw power, it's just pure draw. And like you said earlier, you know, what better way of approaching a tournament than just saying, you know what, I'm just going to draw better than everyone else, right? I'm yeah. just going to um, do what Yeah, I both can. these decks love having some combat potential as well. I think that's what really sets these archetypes apart. I think Gardevoir is much a different beast in this format because yeah. of the likes of that Screamtail that's actually in the prize cards currently oh, for Carl. That's a little bit awkward. And like you said, we are going to be seeing the Technical Machine Evolution. It's already won prize for Christian, so that's going to be something we follow during the game. Carl already has a couple of VIP <laughs> parts in that hand. We see the handshake. We're getting into our round four game here. Christian has the mini. <laughs> Or he's uh, got your number there, Ben. Yeah, yeah, immediately Carl picking that up. Sorry, what are you... Uh, <laughs> sorry, I don't know what that quite is, but we see here Carl Blake. Just one of the two battle VIP pass in that starting hand. We saw here the minor with that far-flying meteor ability <laughs> with the gravitational tackle to boot as well. But Carl definitely going off to the races in this one. Uh, just doing the quick prize check. Of course, it's so important with this deck with that really large evolution line. Usually the 4 4 Curlier with the two Gardevoir um, of both the EX and the Shining Arcana as well. And here we see what good players do. Joe, you always tell me to do it. I never listen. <laughs> it's prize checking. <laughs> yeah, it's an essential part of the game. And not only Pokemon, but also there's lots of one-off supporter cards. I've uh, got to keep an eye on some key resources that Carl's playing here. I think he's going to be really happy that he's staring down a mini or in the active position uh, because it's not really a Pokemon used for this matchup. And it's got a chunky retreat cost as well. So it might force extra outs from Christian. Even just burning fire energy in the opening stages can be a huge issue. But the Battle VIP pass is the ideal way to start yeah. your turn. It's such a crucial card in the Pokemon TCG right now. The Gardevoir players have actually become divided on this card. There are some archetypes choosing to just go high accounts of Ultra Ball and Level Ball and Fog Crystal, but Carl's sticking with the Celebrations Mew plus Battle VIP Pass package, and that's so he can establish more robust boards. Interestingly enough, you see Carl not playing his second copy of Battle VIP yeah, Pass. Interesting. That's because he's holding on to Level Ball and Energy for next turn, so he's already spying his next turn play which would be a Mirage step. Yeah, interesting way to approach this. And we see here Christian coming down with that Arvin. Of course, like you said, with the TM evolution. Of course, having that in the active, not so much the end of the world if he's able to utilize the technical machine evolution on this minor. But here we see Arvin definitely going to be getting that battle VIP pass to get Christian set up. Yep, as well as the Technical Machine Evolution. That's why Arvin is such a critical supporter for this list. Uh, Christian will probably be choosing to go second with the archetype. It's just that important yeah. to get this build established. And with the Battle VIP pass, we have to imagine there's going to be a Charmander coming down, as well as a Bidoof, so that we can evolve not only into a Charmeleon very early on, but also get your draw energy immediately online. Yeah, so strong the Technical Machine Evolution, able to evolve effectively turn one yeah. from that attack evolution. And here we see, like you said, the Badoof coming down. He's a happy chap, playing the full art, of course, <laughs> with Christian, having that little bit wow, of style. really strong hand. Yeah, super strong. Even a second Badoof there as well, coming down. He's going to be drawing all the cards. Mm, this and is here stunning. we see the energy attachment, like I said, on the minor, and using that evolution. Yes, Carl, that's in German. I'm sure if you can speak it, but he's going to evolve the Bidoof and the Charmander. Interesting here, two different Charmanders, right? The yeah. 60 HP and the 70 HP. You would have thought more HP, the better way of playing it. That's usually the story with a lot of our players. Um, 
But yeah, in this matchup, it can actually be important. That 30 yeah. damage from Charmander, a one energy attachment. As we know, Gardevoir likes to heavily damage its own Pokemon. Yeah. It's actually important to keep an eye out for these attacks when they can be weaved in. They can be really handy, as Christian's had pretty much the ideal turn one with a supporter to hold on to if anything goes wrong, if Carl's able to, uh, you know, enforce any pressure. But as we know, Carl pretty much lined up a Mirage Step turn this turn. I don't think he's going to deviate from that game plan, which means Christian is probably going to be on the offensive. And unlike the sort of Pidgeot lists of Charizard, you get to be much more in control of how many two prize Pokemon you're putting into play. And I think this is why sometimes you could think that the barrel list is much more difficult for a Gardevoir player. So let's see how this plays out as Carl is pretty much going through the expected motions here. We're going to see the Mirage Step Curlier searched out via this level ball. We do see the uh, energy attachment in the hand as well. So we're all expecting to see pretty much just the Mirage step here. Yeah, two players getting what they want here, effectively, really. So we see here the Mirage step energy attachment on that Curlia, like you said, keeping that level ball in hand as well. Really efficient here from Carl, hoping to get the three Curlia out here yeah. so we can start drawing next turn. That's the thing. His hand's not all that impressive, but because you're grabbing yeah. three Curliers, you're going to start using refinement and getting yourself into a much better position here, which is fantastic. So he has to be happy with his setup, at least. Yeah, He's going to have one final look through what else he has access to. Screamtail is sometimes a really good attacking option, so it's a little bit frustrating that that's in the prize cards for him at the minute. Um, as we pass things over to Christian now, the town store has Ultra Ball and Iono. Yeah, what a hand. Yeah, continuing to hand. just have so much cycle now can immediately grab the Charizard if they wish, start thinning some Fire Energy out the deck and just guarantee your attacker this turn. Yeah, I mean, he can opt to even evolve that second Bidoof. Uh, draw all the cards effectively, and the Ultra Ball just opting, maybe maybe trying to keep the... Look at this, the Iono is not the, the most obvious the choice store. when your opponent has that low hand yeah, size. Yeah, yeah, of course. Carl, I think, is only holding on to three or four cards. Uh, so, choosing that they want to have a better supporter choice uh, eyeing up Luminion, which is interesting. There is the Town Store option in hand as well. That's the one card kept right now, but it is going to be the Charizard. I like this the most. It just yeah. guarantees that you're getting pressure this turn, and it also deck thins three Fire Energy to make your Bit Barrel have better odds of drawing better stuff now. And of course, if you obviously put down the Town Store, you will be optimally drawing with Bit Barrel, drawing up to five. And that heavy retreat cost, like you said, on the minor two energy. Attachments required from Christian, but that's not a problem when you have Charizard and the Infernal Rain ability. Just shuffling up here. Yeah, it's interesting that um, Christian wanted to not play the Iono here. It makes sense just from a raw amount yeah. of cards in hand standpoint, but Carl's actually holding on to a monster. He's already got Reverse yeah. Energy, Ultra Ball, and uh, EX, so it may not work out for him. As we see five additional cards, not much help here for Christian, actually. It does have Nest Ball, so it could go Nest Ball, Town Store for Forest Hill Stone if he really wants to unlock yeah, his board a little bit, but it may just be a retreat attack play. Maybe opting to find a boss, try and get rid of one of those could on the bench, but... Yeah. Not so, just going to be the KO here. Yeah. Pretty fast turn, that is uh, one of the benefits of Charizard. Once you get that TM evolution, you need so little yep. on the following turn. All we saw from Christian there was evolve into Charizard, and that was it. Uh, but it was enough, and he's on the, on the board now, and he's going to be pressurizing. Look at this car going for the Rolts early here. Doesn't want to give up one. Oh, that's a really yeah. strong draw. Fantastic. There was already the Ultra Ball, but it just makes these refinements a lot easier. I think there's only two Psych Energy in the discard pile right now. We have one Reversal Energy. So we've got to keep track of how much damage we can ramp this turn with a Shining Arcana Gardevoir. Yeah, still a bit to do for Carl to try and do something about this Charizard in the active. But we talk about Charizard being that big hitter, of course, only able to do more damage if Carl's going to be taking prizes. However, we talk about Gardevoir being such a good comeback deck, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it has so many options. It has the Reversal Energy, it has the Iono. Sometimes it will even play Roxanne. It, of course, now plays Counter Catcher as an addition from Paradox Rift. How do you see Charizard, uh, how do you see, sorry, Gardevoir approaching this matchup with such a large Pokemon, 330 HP, so 
big. Well, it's getting rid of the Psych Energy. We don't have Psych Energy currently in the hand from Carl. He's been able to thin the luxurious cape here before beginning to draw, but he really needs to be refining away these energy. There's only two Psychic Energy in the discard pile right now. So even with the Reversal Energy attachment, he won't be able to get over the line, which means Carl might be forced to go around the Charizard this turn. There's the Counts Catcher that's already come into the hand, so it could be a much easier let's deal with the Barrel this turn oh, and keep well. giving up um, some prizes, but try and affect my opponent's board, knowing that I can try and catch up with Iono's later because, as we've said, uh, you can really try and force single prize maps well with the Gardevoir deck. As with double candy, Carl has even more options and even more draw now. Yeah, and with that rare candy, able to not have to put down the Gardevoir EX because that would be quite an easy two prizes for... Yeah, you could just Christian go for the take. reversal and bring yeah. up the barrel this turn. Carl is playing two copies of the Counts Catcher, which is kind of the common count right now. Keep ahead with the prize race as well, of course, if he's able to do that. There's an Iono pickup as well, which is interesting. There weren't many cards played last turn for Christian, so it may not be something you go for, but cycling towards just energy cards at this point is handy. There will be a rare candy into the active Gardevoir. I'd like to see Noe X come down. If you do, just go for this yeah. Counts Catcher play on the barrel. We've already spotted that keeping a single prize board state is very, very powerful for Carl right now. Yeah, I like not putting down the EX. I think it's going to be a bit of a liability if you put it down this early. You're only really doing Iono to five, which, mm. you know, it, it, it's not great odds. The worker uh, pickup gives you a nice alternative. Yeah. It keeps your hand massive, keeps your EX in hand for next turn. I really like this. There's no real option to discard many more yep. energy right now. Oh, look at this. Khan is eyeing up the Ultra Ball of Worker and Counter Catcher. I thought those were really valuable cards this yeah, turn. Interesting, yeah. Opting to maybe attack this Charizard now. But it's going to be a second Shining Arcana Gardevoir yeah. coming to the top. So possibly Carl is still happy with an Iono play this turn. There's six cards in hand right now for Christian, yeah. so you are still minusing him. Yeah. And not opting for the Gust play with that counter catcher. Really interesting. The second copy is in the hand, actually, I think. So there still oh, okay. could be a counter catcher play. He's playing the bling. That's the problem. I can't <laughs> it's see. All gold. I can't see, Joe. I can't see. <laughs> Where is it all? <laughs> I, need to play str I need a stronger prescription. <laughs> There's going to be a second shiny arcana coming in. How many cards have we seen this turn just from abilities alone? There's still know, yeah, no crazy. supporter played here. That's a second reversal energy coming to the hand. Level ball's an interesting one. We've mirage stepped many curlier out, so there are still um, rolls available. Yeah, that minion should be on the board. Yeah. Uh, just double checking there from the judges. Love to see it. Keep it up for the game. Our lovely judges. And here Man, we just see no energy being found from Carl here. Yeah. He's drawn so many cards and just no access to this energy is really making life more difficult for him. Throws away the second copy yeah. of Counts Catcher this turn. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting play as well. I mean, using these Ultra Balls, I guess, you know, you've evolved your two curlier already. You've only got two on board. You've got the Radiant Greninja, of course. But when we speak about drawing into those energies, it's about keeping it optimal, right? You want to be getting rid of the energy with the curliers to be able to draw effectively and, you know, make those psychic embraces even more effective. But here Carl we see. is going to Iono for a fresh six here, hoping to find more Ultra Ball, more psychic energy, and still has that Greninja to see more as we seem to be just looking towards a big brainwave here. Carl yeah. wants to KO this Charizard as quickly as possible and just take it out of play. Let's see what these six cards offer. A few Psych Energy are nice. A couple of these Ultra Balls have already been played, though. Carl plays three copies of Ultra Ball. So it's not lining up ideally here. Let's see your card is active, of course, with that Psychic Energy meeting the discard pile. Definitely use that Killer as well. And he'll be swinging with this Gardevoir. I think, I believe it was three energy in the discard pile. There's three right? now with the Greninja, yeah. So it's still going to be a pretty reasonable chunk, no doubt. But yeah, not getting the KO here. And here we see Christian's hand just preparing for his turn. We see Arvin, a battle VIP pass, not what you want to see. A churro as well I think in there. There's a churro, not yeah. live right now, so it's probably just going to be an Arvin off the rip from yeah. them next turn. But Carl has no other real options in this hand. There's a collapse stadium that's not looking too powerful unless you want to deny Town Store from your opponent so they can't access Forest Hill Stone. That would be the only real debate, and we are going to see that now. See Just to remove the Town Store. Mm, yeah. Carl can get rid of their Mana Fee. Uh, Carl has oh. to get rid of the Mana Fee. Oh, Opting interesting. Look at this, getting rid of Gardevoir EX. Yeah, so if he gets rid of the Gardevoir EX, it keeps him up with the prize race, right? Because if Christian is able to take that knockout on that Gardevoir, it'll put him down to three prizes when Carl's still only on the six. So, 
Here we see the guard bar hitting the discard pile. This has been played so interestingly from Carl. Very different from where I thought I saw the turn going. And even, yeah, just going to get rid of his draw power and the EX when there was yeah. a line trying to hit KO this Charizard just from a reversal attachment and never even using the EX. Could have kept more Curlier on the board. But as it stands, Carl is forcing a single prize knockout from Christian and is pressurizing the Charizard. Yeah, right here now. we see 240 damage, meet that Charizard with that brainwave. However, it's going to be interesting to see what Christian will do in the face of this. However, not too much of a threat on board, apart from that Gardevoir. He really doesn't want that Gardevoir to stick around with all that energy on it, of course. But like you said, playing Pepper, <laughs> um, as we know, best know him as Arvin. Going through the deck here, opting for maybe a Ultra Ball to evolve that second Bidoof. Yeah, we've already seen the Charmeleon this turn, yep. so going to grab a second TM Evolution, just for fodder for this Ultra Ball alongside the Battle VIP pass. So he's going to declog for his current barrel in hand, but also ideally get a second barrel out of the deck here for more draw, as long as he has access to it. And this turn, at least, will be going on to an even prize race, which is really handy, because you're also taking out a ton of draw power from Carl here. So has to be pretty happy with their hand already. Isn't able to find the second barrel, I don't believe. I don't it might be in the prize card, so maybe even just hold a Charizard for next turn. You could also just uh, grab a basic to the hand, but that's blocking uh, your draw power from the barrel. It's going to be Luminium to the hand, currently Absolutely blocked, Luminium. of course, by the uh, Collapse Stadium. Yeah, interesting, the Luminium. I think easy two prizes for Carl, of course. I don't believe Carl plays the Echoing Horn, so if he's able to just get rid of that. Um, so here we see Christian... Uh, Manually attachment to the Charmeleon, getting that ready for when it evolves into that Charizard, of course. And here we see the barrel, industrious sizes for two. <laughs> Those not, are no good. <laughs> yeah, not much else going on. But two unplayable cards. The good news is he's going up two prizes. Yes. He's going to be knocking out this Gardevoir. And it's pretty much doing the Charizard thing, where you just made your first EX, it's tanked to hit. Pretty much everything's going to plan with this Charizard, and you're pretty close to making your next one. And you've got some nice, robust on board draw power as well. So I could be feeling good about this. Yeah, I'd be pretty happy with the board state right now for Christian. Only two guard bar evolutions on board for Carl. Here we see the Ralts in hand as well. You'd imagine that coming down to just keep up with the pace of this Charizard EX. It is going to have to evolve the Curlier, of course, into the guard bar EX if he's going to be wanting to use that Psychic Embrace. Mm. And I think, I'm not sure if he's shuffled his deck since his Iono, but his second reversal energy was in the hand that then got Iono to the bottom yeah. of the deck as well. So he might have to look towards getting some hand resets in here, as, oh, sorry, deck resets in here as well before drawing with Iono at least. Yeah. So just using the strike, running Arcana is going to reach handy. that energy. Not bad, not bad. And here we see the second Ralts coming down. There's also the argument to maybe go Cresselia this turn. Yeah. You could Cresselia to finish off the Charizard. It's got 240 damage currently on it. You could just swing with that and protect your draw power on the bench a little bit. I suppose the only issue now is that Collapse Stadium, right? If he's going to be wanting to put it's down... It's not this, a Ralts, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that Ralts is not a Ralts, no, you're right. So here we see the Super Rod. Perfect addition to the God of our deck when released. Of course, all of those tiny squidgy Pokemon <laughs> in your evolution line. Look, I'm going to use Squidgy, OK? Let me use Squidgy. I've never thought of Squidgy. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are. Um, and here we see Carl just shuffling up. Yeah, there's the... Just indicating that the Arcana has been used. Yeah. yeah. Not poisoned right now. But we have... Well, the EX is already guaranteed in the hand. Carl used the Super Rod mostly to reset that deck, like we were saying, yeah. so that they could draw now towards that reversal energy. I think that's a big card to find this turn. Because ideally, Carl doesn't want to use an EX. That's how he gets back onto that yeah. odd prize race. Yeah, 100%. Otherwise, he's going to have a big risk on board having that Gardevoir EX on the bench. And here we see... Oh, there's a reversal energy. That's a huge energy. pickup for yeah. Carl. This big is pretty draw. much what he wanted to line up. That's why we saw the Collapse Stadium last turn. He wanted to remove his field of two prize Pokemon. It's worked out fantastically here. He's able to hit his second copy of reversal energy. Puts himself in a much better position. Now we're able to take the knockout on the Charizard and keep up with this prize race, keep up with the momentum against Charizard. And here we see the... Ooh, interesting. We see the evolution into the Gardevoir EX. I believe he is able to take the knockout with the Brainwave. Yeah, it's already there, but it's I think Carl there. wants to use Iona just to reset the hand. So yeah. 
That's what we're going to see now. Maybe he'll proactively use some um, embraces on some bench Pokemon, maybe even start setting up the active even more so that if yeah. Christian does go for a gusting play on the EX, then the God of War is already so big it can deal with the second Charizard in a row. Yeah, Christian still needs to find some pieces. He still needs to find his Charizard EX. Does need to find Boss if he just want to punish that play from Carl. However, going down to two prizes, this is going to... I really like preloading the active level. here. I think it really makes a ton of sense. It means that if Christian does go chasing yeah. the God of War EX, you're then, again, remaining a single prize board state. It's so important to do this as God of War to put yourself as few attacks away from winning. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and not see. being forced into EXs every single turn. We're going to see four energy join <laughs> the Gardevoir in the active here. Doing 300 damage at the moment. That's huge and very important, I think. You know, that just the one attachment required next turn, if it is to survive, to knock out a Charizard EX and does have that energy in hand, of course. And here we see a big brainwave attack from Carl to knock out this Charizard EX. Yep, big and they're level. leveling it up, as you said. And Carl's got a pretty good board state going on here, hoping yep. to maybe take the Screamtail out from prizes, but we know that's not been the case uh, because they've really made a nice contingency here. If this Gardevoir is knocked out, uh, it's just a single prize being taken for Christian. There would still be two attacks remaining, and Carl might be able to get there faster yep. with two attacks on his own end if you imagine that the Charizard EX and other two prizes are in use. The one thing for Carl that I'm a little bit concerned about is the lack of counter catcher. It means that as long as Christian keeps on a nice beat here and is able to possibly even get their own Radiant Charizard as a late game attacking threat, Christian will also be able to retain a nice single prize board state and still be ahead on the sort of attack race right now. Yeah, for sure. And here we see Christian just deliberating the hand here. It does have an Arvin. What's interesting here is that Clap Stadium in play, right? So, you know, he was looking at putting down that Entei with the. Forest Seal Stone to try and guarantee a deck search. However, he does need a second attacker on board, right? If for some, if somehow Carl was able to uh, to knock out another Charizard EX, he needs another attacker on board to come into the face of that, and he will yeah. see the deck search as well. Ideally, you go Charizard EX here, and then you try and weave in Radiant Charizard yeah. as a backup, which could be handy. I think that's the ideal play. I actually think the Entei Forest Seal Stone is a bit of a red herring in his hand right now. Mm -hmm. That's how you put down two multi-prize Pokemon. That's how Carl can actually catch up. It's an easy so I think you really actually have to take those out of the hand and uh, not utilize them. Uh, easy two prizes for Carl. He'll definitely be wanting to see that Entei come down. But here we see the Ultra Ball. Wow, opting. getting rid of the Super Rod as well. Yeah. That's interesting. Thinking they have enough Fire Energy remaining here. Wanting to keep the Forest Seal Stone available. Of course, it can still be used with Luminion V later yep. to try and close out the game. It's a great consistency card when you are getting into that final turn. Keeping him maybe for a big play next. You could in also the next couple of turns. You could turn attach now, then be barrel for a couple of cards, hoping for an easier decision. You could also super rod now to reduce the hand size and then find targets for your Ultra Ball afterwards. There's some interesting sequencing going on here. It is going to be. Yeah, just shuffled up while they thought about their play, really. Yeah. I actually prefer this the most, because you can super rod back in those fire energy so easily, um, reduce that hand size. And this Charizard only needs to get one fire energy out, of course, for itself. I wouldn't mind one going on to something like a Bidoof here just to become a pivot. Yeah, just to, just to mitigate that maybe the boss stall play. Um, oh, no. So by not grabbing this extra energy out of the deck and not giving your Bidoof a pivot here, it forces you to then grab Charizard this turn. This yeah. Barrel now has a lot more work to do here. Yeah. We've already seen a supporter played uh, in the Arvin for the Ultra Ball. So this is a big three cards, actually. Ooh, no help. <sighs> so draw. that's actually pretty awkward for Christian. No energy acceleration either next turn from the Infernal Rain if he was. Uh, this is really awkward. Um, the, good, a, the good news yeah, for Christian good. is that there's two reverse energy having been played. Yeah. So the best way Carl can actually carry this Charizard would be with a two prize Pokemon in Zacian. So Carl probably has to get creative with his own prize map next turn. Yeah. Uh, so that's at least something going for him. And there's no guarantee that this Charizard will actually get knocked out in response here. As Christian's going to go down to three prize cards remaining. And it's really putting the pressure on Carl now, who doesn't have much draw currently on this board, just one Radiant Greninja to help out. So he's going to try and construct something here. Like you said, with those two reversal energies gone, he's maybe going to have to utilize another attacker here, maybe a Cresselia. He's not going to be able to use a Screamtail, of course, being in the prizes. However, is opting to 
I see the Fog Crystal Brindle. from Carl. Yeah. I don't mind trying to weave in possibly Cresselia here. Knock out the Bidoof if you can. Yeah. Because um, there's no real easy way for you to get through this Charizard. You'd be damaging yourself, damaging yourself so heavily with a Zacian. Which might even be in the prize cards as well, actually. I'm not sure if Carl took that yet from prizes. Really awkward prize mapping now for, for both players, I think. I think Christian, <laughs> I th Christian being on three prizes, if, if this Charizard manages to, to survive this turn, uh, which it definitely will, um, it will always be an active option next turn to knock out the Guard of Rex, putting him down to one prize. But Carl Blake on four? I can't imagine Christian putting down another two prizes. Yeah. Um, so is going to have to... You know, he needs he needs three turns of attacking effectively, right? Uh, and, and one of them knocking out a Charizard, which you would imagine would be from the Zashin V. Yeah. Um, well, Carl basically needs to try and weave into Boss's orders at this stage, yeah. surely, at this point. Because you need to try and catch up. You need to try and not deal with the active Pokemon and buy a turn. And the Boss's orders and Cresselia, that's the combo, yeah. actually, that you could use here. You could possibly bring up Bibarel or Minior, go for a... Cresselia play. Oh, but it's going to be it's the Zacian. It's going to be the big knockout. So with no... The, Carl's able to do this much more easily because there's no energy on the Bidoof, actually. This goes back to the last turns in front of Rain from Christian where Carl's just going to say, well, I don't think you have any attackers to finish off this Zacian. Yeah, asking the questions for sure. We see here a big sacred sword. There's eight energy being attached via the Psychic Embrace. It's 160 damage coming on. Big knockout here for Carl, There's putting him down attachment. to two prizes. And Christian really needed him to find his Radiant Charizard this turn as an attacker. But not only that, like we said before, needs to pivot now. Could have attached with Infernal Rain onto one of his Pokemon last turn, but opted not to. So he needs a big, big turn here. He needs to find a switch out and the Radiant Charizard. You see the nest wall there? That's a start. That's the start piece of the puzzle for sure. There's the Super Rod in hand as well, so you can reload some Fire Energy. You can go for... Well, the issue is that the only switch out in Christian's list is one copy of Jet Energy and one copy of Professor Chura's Scenario. And there's no way we can lower our hand size no. enough to draw with the barrel to find the Churro plus Fire Energy combination. Obviously, if you're attaching the Fire Energy to Radiant Charizard, you are unable to attach the Jet Energy yeah. uh, in the same turn. So let's see how Christian wants to try and map this out. Yeah. Possibly even getting a little poke in with a mini or this turn could be your best way to try and put this Zacian even closer into range to two hit KO. If he's but able to find the jet energy, be a big play here. And we see him opting to put those three energy back into the deck from yeah, that think, super rod. I think it's going to be an Iono from Christian. I am pretty sure Christian can't win this turn if you're playing a supporter that isn't Professor Chura's scenario. Um, but, of course, he has time. Carl has two prize cards to take. And there's no way that he can take a two-prize KO next turn. So you can really try and slowly get over the line here, as it is going to be the Iono. Carl going down to two cards and only has one refinement, one Radiant Greninja, and no real way to win immediately next turn. Whereas Christian needs to start piecing things together from this three cards, they can continue to draw with the barrel as well. Let's not forget the minion is a handy tool for next turn. Charmander could be useful right now. You have to assume that Carl takes a one plus yeah. knockout, so filling your bench isn't an issue. Gonna have to put down that Charmander, try to evolve into Charizard next turn. Oh, <laughs> There's rough, the free energy. <laughs> rough draw, a <laughs> pretty rough draw. And we see here a pass, I think, from. Is that a concession? Yeah. There's a concession here from Christian. That's really surprising. I feel like they I were definitely still in the game here. I suppose without the pivot, it would have put down it would have put Gal down to one prize, right? Yeah, just the one prize card remaining. That's really surprising to me, honestly. But here we are. Carl's found themselves <laughs> a way to win the game in this game one. It is a three-game set, of course, so they're still shuffling up. There's more to be done here. But that was a puzzling game, yeah. Ben. I feel like we were both eyeing up different lines of play for both yeah. players here. And the map kind of got murky towards that mid to late game. And it feels like Carl kind of just squeaked it out towards those latter stages where just one per barrel wasn't really enough to cherry pick the exact cards required for Christian there. Showing the power of Gardevoir EX and his comeback potential with the reversal energies, not opting to use the counter catcher. <laughs> no, you feel Both. like that's the big new tool. Yeah, of course, <laughs> in the discard pretty early, but I guess with its main 
uh, threat in the active always, right? Mm -hmm. He's going to be opting to go for those big knockouts on the Charles RDX. Maybe not prioritizing those uh, counter catcher for the Gus plays. Um, but of course, with the reversal energy, he was able to find those plays around the Charles RDX, able to take the two hit knockout mm. um, and keep himself up motivated with the with the prize race of course but going into this matchup now you would have seen a good chunk of your opponent's deck right yeah i don't think my <laughs> i don't think mini would have <laughs> would have come into carl's head with this matchup but no. going into this next game for christian he'll be wanting to have a quick game two to Certainly. put them into a game three uh and to be able to win this game. So what would be going through your head? Well, like you said, still 20 minutes on the clock. I feel like this list chooses to go second. I'll be interested to see if Christian wants to do that because you're going into a fellow evolving archetype. Possibly you still want to go first just so yeah. you can have the chance to even evolve up into the barrel earlier on could be big. We do see some prize cards. It's the Zashin once again for Carl. It's the Churro scenario for Christian, which could have been a game winning card in uh, game one. And it does look like Christian has forced Carl to go first from what I can see here as they are kicking things off with that Battle VIP pass. Battle VIP pass, such a strong card. Of course, if you're able to find it and is opting to go straight for that Radiant Greninja for that additional draw support, able to draw two with that Conceal card if he does have the energy in hand, which he does, of course. Mm -hmm. Christian, of course, with his own Battle VIP pass in hand, just going through the game plan in his head maybe, but start here with Carl, does have that level ball in hand, does have the second energy as well, so is able to Mirage step yep. next turn, if not prized. Yeah, I think that's exactly what's going through Carl's head. I think there's ball search, and you just really have to debate where it goes, really. I think you still probably do get this one Greninja draw in just to start yep. banking some psychic energy in the discard pile. But interestingly enough, as much as this deck loves to cycle, you kind of put yourself on halt in the opening stages whilst you don't want to block your own Mirage step, because if you draw into more Curlias, that means you're getting less value from your own attack. So you really do stunt yourself in the opening stages with this approach, but just getting that many Curlias, as we saw last game, gives you so many options in that mid game. Yeah, I really don't want those Curlias in hand if planning to Mirage step, like you said, but here we see the shuffle here from Carl. Is that all she wrote other than the concealed cards? We do see the cape in hand as well, but attachment here to the Ralts. What's he going to do with that second energy? Maybe keeping it in hand. There's still, yeah, there's a ton of debate to even using this or not. I don't yeah. mind not using it here, because as we say, Carl's guaranteeing that he's getting the Mirage step for full value by yeah. doing this. The only way you can get blocked from this is if your opponent uses an Iono or if you top deck into uh, a Curlia. But even then, you've got two rolls, and you know that Charizard isn't pressurizing you turn one, so he's pretty much prepared for any eventuality here as we see a Battle VIP pass, starting off Christian's turn as well. Yeah, of course. Great setup from both players, as we saw in game one as well. Interesting, going back to the prizes as well for Carl, that Zashin V, one of the last two prizes could come into play in the later stages where Carl's looking for that explosive turn. But here we see Christian putting down that town store, definitely going to be getting that TM evolution. To yeah. Start getting those Charmanders if in Badoops evolved. It works. Yeah, it's of the course. ideal turn. The town store making it come together. No Arvin required. Just had the raw battle VIP pass. Was able to town store for the technical machine evolution, and will once again be kicking off their turn one with two stage one Pokemon fully evolved. So there's the Bibarel and the Charmeleon now ready to rumble in the back, setting themselves up for a really good turn two. Well, you would imagine once again Christian will be the aggressor because Carl has lined up the Mirage Step play once again this game. Yeah, Carl thinking, did you play Arvin? No, I just found <laughs> it. Oh, you just had it. Just had it, did you? Nah, it's fine, whatever. But evolving, like you said, the Bidoof into the Barrel for that extra consistency next turn. And back over to Carl. You can imagine the Mirage Step coming out. Doesn't want to be maybe drawing with the Conceal cards, like we said earlier. Doesn't want to be drawing into those Curliers. Want to be using the Mirage Step as efficiently as possible. Two energy in hand as well. Fantastic hand, especially with those three curly, if you can get them on board ready for next turn. Um, I think, refi I mean, using conceal cards looks good to me here, honestly. I feel like you don't do it if you're going to play the level ball, though. Um, you could do it, and then just you always have the fallback of just evolving one of your rolls on the bench. Uh, but this is the safest route to go. Uh, you're just making sure that you're getting all three curliers out of the deck and getting that full value. Um, and just saying that you've got your work cut out for you over the next couple of turns to just refine away the psych energy that's currently in that hand. Yeah, nothing more intimidating than 
a whole board state of curliers on your opponent's <laughs> side of the board. You're going to be drawing some cards, my friend. Six cards maximum per turn from those curliers. And here we see the Mirage step coming out. And the energy, manual energy attachments, interesting play. It's one way to get energy in the discard pile. Yeah, if you just get knocked out, that's fantastic. And if you're opponent, you're sort of dissuading your opponent from gusting up some of your draw power as well. Yeah. So this is a great way to sort of hedge once again. It's actually a pretty cute play from Carl to do it this way around as well. So that, yeah, your opponent probably won't go for any of your draw power, which is great. But also it means even if you are hit with Iono, you've at least banked two of the energy. Like we were saying with the concealed card, that was my main debate here. But attaching kind of gets the job done as well. It's an ongoing threat as well, I guess, if yeah. he's able to evolve this into the Shining Arcana next turn. But you can imagine Christian with the... Well, there's oh, no guarantees, there's especially much, with this hand. There's not, yeah, there's not much in that hand. Only using industrious sizes for maximum of three, right? You could play the he jet energy. The jet of energy, course, yeah. you can infer It's just going to be two cards. Oh. He kept the board space open and found the Charizard, he actually. He found the Charizard, which is fantastic. Yeah. And the Iona. These are crazy cards to find. Really helpful here. Yeah, definitely a big two cards there from Christian. And Playing oh, Iona. Oh, interesting. Wow, that is a huge surprise to me. Yeah, that was... It feels like Charizard surprise. was a fantastic choice there. There's a Charmeleon ready and waiting on the bench, but we're just going to put it to the bottom here. Yeah, you have Christian all your energy still. To find other attackers, perhaps. Have all your energy still left in the deck as well, but is able Found to still find it. Charizard. <laughs> and <a> Charizard. <laughs> still able to find it, though. Hey. Um, <laughs> oh, you had it, did you? Um, rare candy into the Charizard is active. And here we see the infinite rain, raining energy down on that board for Christian. Maximum of three energy across your board states. Not a bad ability at all. And here we see, I would imagine, the knockout on the Curlier this turn. Yep, has to be with the Iono having been played. There's also two energy coming onto a Charmeleon here. It actually can be a pretty handy backup attacker. Yep. Uh, and can be actually Christian's way of forcing a single prize knockout earlier on in the game as well. Yeah. But of course, it's, it's most likely still going to be a Charizard swinging this turn, I would think. One of the biggest threats that Gardevoir has is these really powerful single prize Pokemon in the Gardevoir. Of course, that brainwave attack able to take two prizes very easily on some of these Vs and EXs across the meta. One of the reasons these players love the deck and here we see the draw from Carl I believe it was a ultra ball it's a lot of gold in there yeah I can't keep my eyes there's off the gold there's a rare candy there's a reversal there's an ultra ball this is a really good start for Carl actually there's already two psychic energy in the discard pile you can conceal cards you can get on your way to actually getting a response KO this turn I think his hand is pretty well prepped for it to be fair and we see the concealed cards here as well if he's able to draw into more energies use that ultra ball for further discard I wouldn't mind seeing the Avery first here. It just gives you more access to discard energy. If you draw any energy from your top three cards, you can get full value from your refinement. But yeah. it's going to be a battle VIP pass to go first of all. Well, VIP pass, not a terrible card to refinement, of course, thinning the deck. Well, we do um, see some energy, that's nice. Cards. And, you know, like I said, the kind of catcher also there as well. But the psychic energy more important for this refinement, I would imagine. Yep, it's going to be the see. fourth energy in the discard pile. Ooh, nice. Oh, That's also another there. Fog Crystal and Shining Arcana. We can now Rare Candy the active, Fog Crystal out another basic energy for this final refinement. There's already Rare Candy, oh, sorry, there's already Ultra Ball in hand as well for the Gardevoir EX. We haven't seen the Luxurious Cape now. Interestingly, you may think that was a missequence, but because the Cape was Iono to the bottom of the deck, yeah. Carl didn't want to reset the deck. Now that he's gone in with Fog Crystal, he is choosing to take the uh, Luxurious Cape out. So Carl keeping good track of what's where in the deck. Yeah. Really nice play. Perfect really plays. as well. Perfect plays from some of our players here. And here we see the opting for the Ralts from the rare candy. Just another little deck search there. What are my odds of hitting what I need here? You'd imagine looking for those reverse energies for this response knockout. Hoping to play a bit of ping pong here with the knockouts. And here we see another draw from the Curlia and another psychic hit in the discard pile and here we see another rare candy as well 
So all of our Curlia and Greninja has been used. There's still Rare Candy into the active for a couple more draws. And there's still a supporter to be played, let's not forget. <laughs> we cannot get lost in this turn, because there's still so much going on here. Such large hands, so many options for Carl as well. This will be the tenth, the ninth and tenth cards drawn from abilities alone here. And here we see the reversal energy as well from Carl. Such fantastic draws, but you know what? This is just the story of Gardevoir, right? I mean, so much consistency. Options See if Avery for you. can help us out. I think we need one more Psych Energy to get the KO here. I can't really see Carl's Discard Pile too well, but I think there's currently five in there. He can evolve the Curlier into another Gardevoir. If he opts for... I think we're only at 300 damage right now with the Reversal Energy turn attachment. Like you said, we could go fishing for a second Arcana Gardevoir. The alternative is that you just go Reversal plus Counter Catcher this turn and yep. keep that one prize board state. I really like that play. It's kind of what we highlighted in game one, actually, that never came to fruition, but also seems open here. Still keeping up with the prize race. Still matching up with Christian's five prize cards remaining. And it, it makes sure that you can reversal again next turn as well. It's so important to sort of just be keeping toe-to-toe -to -toe with decks with Gardevoir because you're so much stronger when you are slightly behind in the game. Yeah. As Carly's going to go for the easier one-prize knockout option here instead with the counter catcher. Interesting going for the Charmini instead of the, the barrel. I think with the amount of disruption options that Carl plays with the Iono, I maybe would have liked to have seen a knockout on the barrel. I mean... It, Interesting to take out the threat of Charmeleon. There's already mm. one more Charmander on board. Um, and we know how Christian is, you know, the game plan is going to be trying to utilize the Radiant Charizard. Um, so interesting play there from Carl. Here we see Christian starting his turn, drawing the Forest Seal Stone. Has Ultra Ball in the hand. He's probably just going to reload their next Charmeleon, to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see many reasons to not. You can see the Town Store first, can possibly thin the deck. There's Defiance Band in the deck list. There's more technical machines that can be just pitched at this stage of the game because you're looking to attack from now on. Yeah, thinning the deck there as well. Thinning is winning, as we always say, in the commentary box for some of our top players. Sequencing so important, of course, opting to get that Charmeleon, like you said. Involving that Charmander. Yeah, uh, seems solid. There's the Iono, the other side of this hand as well. So you're going to be taking a little bit of draw off Carl's board. Obviously, there's still a ton of it. <laughs> yeah. But you're getting that response. The, the real issue is that Carl hasn't left any damage around, so you can't really poke um, this Gardevoir with anything. You have to use your EX Pokemon. You're hoping that at least this little bit of disruption can help you out and make life difficult for Carl to find. Possibly their next reversal energy would be the main thing you're trying to disrupt here. Yeah, I know not quite as effective when your opponent's got <laughs> three Curlia and the Radiant Greninja on board. You kind of just shrug at that stage. Yeah. It's like a fine if fine, you want. Fine, I have to play it. <laughs> if you're telling me to play it, I'll play it. It's fine. Uh, Nest Ball for some more basics. I think just another Bidoof can come out of the deck at this stage. There's nothing else too valuable. Maybe the Radiant Charizard if you want to proactively grab that. Radiant Charizard would certainly set him up for the later turns if it's, it's there. It's going to be the mini war. There he is, the mascot, <laughs> helping out. Interesting choice. Interesting choice. Now, the far flying meteor ability, actually, really interesting. So, once during a turn, if this Pokemon is on your bench, when you attach an energy card to your hand, this Pokemon, you may uh, switch it with your active. So, it can act as a little bit of a pivot. Yeah, ironically, it helps out against some Screamtail trapping lines. Yeah. <laughs> you think it's just in here for block Snorlax, and obviously it's a fighting type, so you can get through Snorlax really easily. And you basically flip the match up with this one card inclusion. But it randomly can come up in this one as well at times, yeah. if there are going to be some Hail Mary, you know, Screamtail plus Iono plays from Carl with Counter Catcher and such. Yeah. Uh, so it can be randomly helpful, especially because Screamtail damages itself so heavily. We've been talking about players being creative. How creative is that from Christian uh, in the face of the meta? Choosing a card a little bit unknown, I would say, across our player base. But we see Carl here starting his turn, does have the Artisan. Didn't to get rid of Christian's Town Store. Uses the Artisan, such a great card for just a little deck search if required. Here we see Christian opting to get the Rolts. Yeah, having a little think about it. Screamtail also pretty reasonable here, but it is going to be a Rolts in the end. Um, just again, maintain your draw power. You've just had a Gardevoir get knocked out. Let's try and reload those. Let's maintain 
as much of these refinements as possible and make sure we can just have this dominant board state. Galois can sometimes pop off on these turns, but then fizzle towards the latter stages if you don't have this upkeep throughout the entire game. So it's good to see from Carl. Yeah, interesting match, I think, this looking at, at a high level. I think just some awkward prize mapping required from either players. There's a lot of single prize Pokemon on Carl's board, but of course 330 HP is no mean feat for Carl um, to reach. And here we see... That's energy Kulia. number seven for Carl yeah. going into the discard pile, Psych Energy at least, from refinements here. There's going to be a Shining Arcana now as well. Got to keep an eye on the clock as well at this stage, of course. Uh, just the six minutes remaining. Carl is one game up. They, he has no reason to win this second game, yeah. realistically. He can um, not conclude this game and still end up the victor. But he seems to be going pretty well here. Uh, not wasting time necessarily at all, making sure that they're keeping their lines available to them. Uh, Going to Ultra Ball away the Mew and the Battle VIP pass and get the EX in the mix here. Making that Psychic Embrace active, of course, with that Ultra Ball. But of course, still needs to use those other two. Curlier before evolving, you would imagine. Is he able to find the knockout on this Charizard? If that's the line, even. Again, he could <laughs> try and re retain a single prize board state again. If you continue to fish for your second reversal energy, that's still available to you. And it so has actually just come to the hand. Yeah. Carl it. has used a stadium here, so it couldn't collapse away any X if you were to evolve into one. I believe it was um, Counter Catcher was the other card, or was it reversal energy? I see Screen Tail, I oh, see screen Professor's tail. Research in here as well. I can't see that second gold card. Ah, oh, it's Cape. Yeah, Luxurious Cape came into the hand. Was it Town Stored out or was it drawn into? Town Stored it for free. Ooh, there's an oh, energy there's a hit. Boss as well. And boss's orders. Again, there's so many lines coming out from the Gardevoir. Yeah. As we see more and more cards, your, your turn changes as you go. So many options, so many different ways of approach when it comes to game plan. Here we see the evolution into the Gardevoir EX. Looks like Carl's pretty happy with it, though. Going to start getting some Psyche Embraces on. Going to retreat the Rolts by the looks of things. Has the Reversal Energy to again springboard into this Charizard. Does have the Research as well, able to reach a bit further into the deck. Here we see... I don't mind refining away Screen Tail here. Yeah. Just because you have recovery for it. Luxurious Cape is another option as well at this stage. Knowing that you want to keep throwing single prizes at the opponents. Here we see the Gardevoir coming out. Big brainwave here. Looks like counting how many energy is available to him from the discard pile. Does have that reversal energy still in hand. Quick shuffle. One, two, three. Can't figure out how much to commit here with the reverse energy. Because, of course, he'll be going up in prizes for the first time in the game. Yep. So you have to also account for the fact that reverse energy turns itself off when you become ahead in the game. And that Christian could once again go looking for an EX KO next turn. It's definitely right to map out the damage here is able to hit the 330 mark here on the Charged RDX with that Psychic Embrace and matches up the... Go, well, sorry, goes ahead, goes, goes ahead now in the prize race against yeah. Christian. It's done the same thing as last game where you have the dual threat. You're yeah. forcing Christian... Well, Christian wants to take a two-prize KO, but because this Gardevoir is so dangerous that if Christian once again goes ahead in the prize race, Carl can retain a single prize board later down the line and again put uh, Christian in that same position. So it's really well mapped out from Carl in the second game. Christian left with just the Charmeleon in the active, but does have the option to go searching for that Charizard. Ultra Ball and Arvin already in hand. Definitely going to be evolving into that Charizard to try and match up this prize race, maybe even looking could try and use Mini yeah. Or this turn. Could use <laughs> Mini Or could take a knockout this he, turn. He could be. To There's take two retreat cost on uh, Shining Arcana Gardevoir. But we know Carl just has so many options in hand for his next turn. Does have that boss as well. But here we see the Forest Seal Stone 
Ideally for me, Christian doesn't evolve into a Charizard this turn, just uses Artisan, gets another Charmander down, starts building his board around this yeah. so that you're threatening a late game Charizard. But if you go Mini or KO here, Radiant Charizard KO next turn, you can have two single prize attacks that take uh, meaningful knockouts, and then you still have a Charizard towards the end game. I think there's still one rare candy rattling around in the deck. I feel like that's got to be the best route here. Yeah, you want to make it more difficult for your opponent to take the game for sure. I think if you can utilize two single prizes, that would be the most optimal way forward. And here we see Christian. Yeah, we've seen the Artisan for the Charmander, for the I believe. Charmander, and we're yeah. going back in with some more Ball Search cards. Ultra Ball and Nest Ball as an option. Second barrel in hand. I think that's an Iono as one of his last cards yeah. with the energy. So can find the Charizard. Uh, the players are just <laughs> Which one's the deck? Which one's the discard pile? <laughs> yeah, we've just, the awkward thing is we've just seen a rod, but I believe what's currently in Christian's hand is the discard pile now. Yeah. Carl certainly can't look through that. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to give that that's the judges at this point. <laughs> uh, this might take a little minute just to resolve, but it looks like uh, the Super Rod confused things a little bit with some turn face up discard pile slash deck at this stage, but should be pretty okay. There was a Charmander and two energy were yeah. getting shuffled back in, but because we skipped a step with the Artisan immediately grabbing the Charmander, things got a little bit confused here, but shouldn't have uh, really affected the game state and should be resolved fairly easily here. Looks like we're all on the same page now. We're all on top of it. And oh, with only one minute remaining, Christian's going to have to really find a way of taking these four prize cards as soon as possible. It's got to be, show me the mini or yes. I want to see it. Come on. <laughs> Before the end of this game, please. This is why you're here. I need a gravitational tackle in my life, please. It's going to be a Charizard instead. My heart sank a little bit when I saw the EX, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> because now, genuinely, <laughs> as much as we want to see the mini for the fun gimmicky KO, now Christian is offering up a two-attack prize map for Carl. Yeah. with this EX being, you know, the final two prizes for him, potentially, with Azashian. It would have been nice to see a single prize into a single prize, then into Charizard Correct. EX, of course. Yeah. You could go Mini or you could try and use Radiant Charizard, and then you do a late-game Charizard EX to and take your final two prizes. And if Christian's going to be taking... Well, Christian's still technically on a three-turn game, yes. right? Yeah, So sure. with only the, with only the single... Uh, dual oh, prize he's thinking about it. Show me oh, the video. Come on, please, Christian. <laughs> you got to do it. It's correct it's... as well. Oh, it's happening. Yes. <laughs> the far-flying meteor coming in and holds on to the Iono, crucially, <laughs> as well, which is interesting, which is uh, yeah, certainly a good line. Guaranteeing that disruption. You want to do it a long... Yeah, once you've taken out even more Gardevoir pieces, yeah. that's where it becomes even more valuable. I feel like that was the right choice. Sure, but... If Carl's able to knock out this Charizard, it's not going to be looking good for Christian going into these later turns. I want to take a peek at those prize cards for Carl, because I think the Zashin was in the top The Zashin was in the top it. two, So I yes. think the only remaining way that Carl can finish off this Charizard would be a luxurious cape combination with yeah. a Shining Arcana Gardevoir. That's a new card from Paradox Rift. You can buff your non-rule box Pokemon by 100 hit points. You then have the drawback of giving up two prize cards, but if you're using this hit point buff to just shove more Psych Energy onto your Gardevoir to close the game, it's the perfect solution. It's not too much of a problem now either, being that Christian's already on the three prizes, so you've, you've made it quite awkward for Christian to take the game efficiently. And here we see Christian, uh, sorry, Carl with that large hand. The Screamtail is there as well. I'd love to see Screamtail that this That is turn. an option. Screamtail, yeah. the barrel looks like a really good play for me. The opponent didn't play a supporter last turn. They have a fairly low hand size. They have a mini or in the active position. <laughs> <laughs> with a two retreat cost as well. Yeah, true. It's even more steps for Christian. Here we see the concealed cards. I believe down. we should have confirmation on time on the round as well here. So that could also change what Carl wants to do. Yeah, we do have confirmation that Carl is turn zero, I believe. So that could also be affecting Carl's decision making here. Both with two turns remaining. Screamtail Iono, knock out the barrel seems like a really good combination. Both players are able to take the game. There are two prizes on either side of the board, so this isn't out of the realms of possibility for Christian if Carl's not able yeah. to... Carl could simply dig towards Collapse Stadium as well. Yeah. That could be his way of denying Christian winning two attacks. But we know Iono is pretty much queen of disruption, especially in these later stages of games as well. So if Carl's able to take out that barrel, like you said, with the Screamtail, 
this would be really effective going into those later stages. Feels like a winning play to me, certainly. Worker in hand, Carl wanted to retain a large hand size. But really, with only two turns remaining. And let's stress, Carl does not have to win down. the game. He can win the game, too, just on prize cards alone. Also, just seeing how many cards yeah. remain in the deck, because, again, Collapse Stadium is something you can dig towards here. I really like the Scream Tail coming down. I feel like Ayono Scream is always strong, but it's going to be the Worker. Do you see three additional cards? Cresselia, Ultra Ball, Counter Catcher. Counter Catcher not currently live. They're level on prize no. cards. You see the Ultra Ball, the Cresselia. Yeah. And just possibly the Lost Vacuum? No, it's the Professor Research, yeah. With only two turns remaining for Carl. He's going to be opting for those Iono anyway. And already playing the Worker. He is going to be going into his last turn and he gets his turn next. And here we see the Manaphy. You imagine just a thin deck a little bit further. I don't believe I saw a boss in hand. So no. maybe, maybe just searching for that boss for next turn to guarantee the game. It's going to be but two energy attached to this Guard of to retreat. Scream Tail is coming up. You've got to think that getting rid of the barrel is the play here. It'd be really interesting to see if Carl gets the Zarshan V off these prizes now as well. Here we see the three energy coming down onto the screen tail. Able to hit for 120 here on Christian's bench. And you can imagine he'll be definitely taking out that barrel, like you said. Ready for next turn, just yep, reducing, reducing the amount of odds for Christian to be able to take an effective turn. Here we see yep, the screen It is going to be the expected KO on the barrel. So even if, if Christian is able to take a two-prize knockout this turn with a uh, boss's orders play, which we know, I believe, currently can't happen, it means he's going to have to try and line it up next turn, but Carl will be able to use Iono <laughs> to just two cards and possibly even Countercatcher as well. This is a big Iono uh, for Christian if he decides to play it. And here we see the NTV come down, just making that Forest Seal Stone that little bit more effective, of course, yeah, I don't think you can forest for boss's orders because you have to remove this meteor out the way, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. Have to be able to deal with that two energy retreat cost. Could be Forest Hill Stone after the Iono here. You can take a single prize knockout this turn. Yeah. That's fine. Um, it doesn't stop your scheme. So possibly just hold the Forest Hill Stone on the board for next turn. You go for the Iono now and don't actually forest for anything. I don't know if Christian used his counter catcher this game. I think that's still open, yeah. Oh, still play as well. I don't know here coming down. So has to find one of those two pieces. Here we see the Arvin and an Ultra Ball Jirachi. Oh, it's pretty rough. Yeah. I can imagine having like you to said, use... it's a combo that he had to draw. Yeah, having to use that Forest Seal Stone for a retreat. Or is able to take the knockout. No. Screen uh, tail with just the one retreat cost. It's only 20 yeah. times, only it's not 20, a 20 yeah. plus. Yeah. So it is forced to use... Uh, Forest Hill Stone to grab any card from the deck, and it's going to be Jet Energy. Let's get this Charizard ready to rumble yeah. and take a single prize KO. It's not really where Christian wanted to be this turn. There were more powerful things to do if the Iona was kinder, but at this stage, that's all we can see. Christian going down to just two prize cards remaining. Uh, the Reddit Charizard was actually prized, so that's possibly why Christian had to go down this route instead. Would have really it's liked to Carl. have used. I think there's Collapse Stadium in the hand. There's Level Ball in the hand as well. So it could be as simple as Carl searching the Manaphy back out of deck and retreating this Gardevoir EX. As long as we're correct on our um, turn count here, this should be Carl's final turn of the game. Correct, yeah. We're really, Christian would have liked to have seen, you know, using that Forest Seal Stone for a boss's orders for next turn. Uh, However, unable to do so. Carl still needs a lot this turn. He's still, still, you know, it's not out of the realms of possibility of missing this knockout on the Charizard. However, here, just going through the deck from that Super Roz, just kind of how many energy, just getting that Gardevoir back and the Curlia. Uh, didn't see whether he was, oh no, still unable to take the Zashin, of course, so that isn't a play that's available to him. So he's going to be looking for either. Well, he's going to be looking for the Luxurious Cape, right? For, well, the, for the Shining Iconogarva? Yeah, if he wants to win in terms of winning game one and game two, that's a play. Yeah.
but if you want to just collapse away this Gardevoir, that will also end the game. You see level for Ross. I think Carl's spotted that he doesn't have to win game two. He He's a game win. up. He yeah. can just win one game. And that will be how we're concluding this series by the looks of things. Collapse oh, Stadium. Wow, yeah. Two there five cards left for Christian. The collapse of the Gardevoir away will close out game two. So it's a 2-0 victory for Carl Blake here in our round number four. And a really nice display, a really interesting first game where we were both debating what the best yeah, lines of play I... were for both players. And uh, yeah, similar in that second game. Uh, both of these archetypes can draw so many cards, both have robust engines to fall back from Iono at times. So both of these players lining up different things to us, possibly in the booth here, but still finding great ways to win. Yeah, I didn't know where that game was going to go, really. Uh, I think two players very well versed with this matchup. You know, they definitely have their game plans going forward into these different matchups, you know, and we see it there from Carl. You know, that collapsed stadium last play, that prize, you know, prize disruption. Denial, yeah. You know, denying the two prizes. Um, but yeah, really interesting to see. Yeah, and I'll be honest, I love God of White Yaks. I think in this format, yeah. it's the coolest deck in the game right now. You just have so many plays. You have so much comeback potential. It's what we've yearned for in the TCG for years. It's been delivered in the Scarlet and Violet expansions, and we're getting even more of these cards. Counter Catcher was one of my picks for the tournament in terms yeah. of a key card to watch out for. And we didn't see it too much in that game, but I think just when things line up with Iono Screamtail Counter Catcher yeah. or Avery Screamtail Counter Catcher, these sorts of lines could just be so detrimental for many archetypes. Garnevoir is on such high power level now that really it feels like it's only the Iron Hands and Iron Valiant that put me off that archetype. Yeah. Every other time I'm up against pretty much any other deck, I feel pretty confident as Gardevoir because you have so much draw power and so many weapons in its arsenal now. I think as well with the Gardevoir, it's really able to utilize Iono more than any other deck in format, right? Yeah. With the amount of draw support that it has from the Gardevoir, from the Curlia and the Greninja, mm -hmm. you know, going down to four pro going down to four ha cards in hand isn't the end of the world, right? No. If you've got two Curlia up, you can still draw four more, putting into an eight card hand. Oh, I've drawn into an energy. There's the concealed <laughs> cards as well. You all of a sudden you go, oh, yeah. I can do everything. I've got it again. <laughs> yeah, I'm back. And uh, yeah, impressive to see the uh, different build of Charizard as well. I think the debate rages on. Brought to us by Paradox Rift, the technical machine evolution coming in, giving you a different um, ability to draw cards rather than Pidgeot cherry picking a piece every turn. That's even more vulnerable to Path of the Peak. That requires you to have more from judge plays. You know, we've seen Mew out there happy to judge an opponent and hope they have nothing from a path play. So you're a little bit more robust in that regard as well. And they're still on a pretty respectable record, of course. You're able to lose games earlier on in day one and still be in the tournament. Uh, you still have a few lifelines left. So I'm looking forward to see more of Christian, hopefully, as the day goes on. Yeah, of course. I'm sure we'll be able to see these two players ballot out in day two. But for now, we're going to have a little break here.